All right, we're going to start off tonight with our appetizer and uh, praise report message. Uh, appetizer means to create hunger, and uh, the praise reports, God gets all the glory. So we want to welcome the 503 house churches locally, nationally, and internationally. Let's give them a <laughs> We know you guys will be watching all week, so thanks for your prayers. You are the original wineskin to disciple the harvest. Jesus said, send out laborers into his harvest field. So it's 503 of you have open house churches. That was the original wineskin. Uh, there wasn't any brick and mortar buildings. It was just 3,000 people got saved and 300 house churches opened. The people were baptized. They began meeting house to house daily. And then people started getting saved in the house churches as well. But I'm not going to go to this verse, but Matthew 9, 35 through 38. And uh, Jesus said, pray that the Lord of the harvest would send out laborers into his harvest field. So when you open a house church, you're a laborer and you're opening your home or somebody else's home to bring in the harvest to be discipled. And it is in the Bible. Amen? Amen? Get in the book of Acts. You'll see it there. If you're opening a house church or already have, put the heart emoji on our Facebook page so we can be praying for you. <clears throat> we just want to be lifting you up. Use the video and the altar call and have a discussion. And I want to show you uh, the power of a celebration service. Now, a celebration service is about 30 people or more, but I'm going to tie this into a pastoral couple that we met with this week for four and a half hours. So let's go to Acts 115. Acts 115. There were larger meetings held in homes. And uh, in Acts 115, I'll wait until everybody gets there. <clears throat> Acts chapter 1, verse 15. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120. That's, that's a lot of people. And Missy and I have actually been in the house where they had this meeting in Israel. And it could handle 120 in there, but it was probably tight. That house still exists to this day. Um, some call it the upper room, but it was a big room and a big house. And um, so let's look at Acts 2, 1 through 2 to back that up with Scripture. So Acts 2, 1 through 2, just right next door. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. So they weren't just standing in this house. They were seated about 120 people in this house. Um, and I want to share, tie that in with the story. Uh, we met with a senior pastor couple this week who live on North Pole Valley Road. God told them to step away from their brick and mortar to open house churches. So after I got off work, Monday, we went to their home Monday night and we spent four and a half hours there. So the reason I preface after I got off of work, because you can still minister after you get off work. You can still work all day and then go do your real job. And that's ministering for the Lord. When we work with our hands, that's so we can put a chicken in the pot, a car in the driveway, a shingle on the roof. You know, that's, you know, that's what we work for. But when we work for the Lord, that's eternal. That's, that's putting treasures in heaven. So um, they are going to open a celebration service in their home. Now, this was new for me because we have pastors contacting us wanting to know about the structure of the house churches, house to house. This was new for me to have a senior pastor couple 
say, Randy, how do we do the celebration service in our home? Now, their living room is as big as this room <coughs> with the kitchen and the living room. It, it's awesome. Beautiful ranch setting up in the hills. So this was new for me. And um, they said, Randy, how can we set up a celebration service? So we spent about four and a half hours on spraying a little bit of that. A house church is 12 people or less. Once you start getting around 12 people, it's too many. It, it needs to be about 12 or less. 13 to 30 people is considered a congregational meeting and there's very little intimacy. If you start getting around 30 people, it's usually somebody standing in the front and people seated. You start getting between 13 to 30 and you get two people asking a question that can just go off the rails. And that's not what that service is meant for. It's meant and you'll you'll mingle a little bit more because it's under 30 people. But once you go over 30 people, that's considered a celebration service. And there's there's no intimacy there. It's not designed to be. You have someone sharing, trying to motivate you. House church is where you have intimacy. Our average house church is around four to five people nationally. That's what all these people that are contacting me, they're getting pumped up because they've already got three people that want to come over to their house. I said, man, you're full. <laughs> they're like, what, Rand? I only had five. I said, five's great. Jesus had 12, but he had three. Peter, James, and John, he would break it down to where it was him and those three guys. So a congregational service, 13 to 30, a celebration service definitely is a motivational service. We're just trying to motivate you. This couple is going to have a service in their home where they video the service. So what they're going to do in their celebration service on Sunday morning in their home, they're going to shoot a video. And then that video is going to be prepared for when all their house churches open and they'll have house churches Monday through Saturday. They heard about the Lamb's Book of Life that we have here and they go, Randy, can we use the Lamb's? I said, you can use anything you want. You know, it's not copyrighted, man. This couple is going to have a service in their home where they video the service for their house churches. When they open them, this is the area that's getting ready to be impacted by this house church. Bonanza, Merrill, Malin, and Tule Lake. Bonanza, Merrill, Malin, and Tule Lake. This service in their home will be a Sunday morning service. So these people, God told them to step away from the brick and mortar. So they could minister to more people. Almost all the people, Jennifer, that have already said we want to come, which is a lot. None of them will go to church. None of them but they have no problem going to this house church. That's not a criticism on the brick and mortar on Sunday. If your brick and mortar is rocking and you're boasting about what you did Monday through Saturday, then it's a superficial, simple service. But what God's having us do is take what we do on Saturday or in their case, Sunday morning, and it multiplies. We've just happened to got into the hundreds and thousands because in January, we've been doing this for three years. But guess what? Now people are contacting us and we're pouring it into them. That four and a half hours, I got home, I couldn't go to sleep. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't sleep. I had to get up at five to go to work and I was just, I was ready. I could have leaped over a small child maybe. <laughs> But I called, uh, Pastor Alex called me the next day. He goes, Randy, we couldn't go to sleep. Man, we couldn't go to sleep. See, that's when it's exciting, when it's out there. 
So their house churches will be Monday through Saturday. Any time that works for the house pastors or leader, labor, whatever title, to watch the video from Sunday and have a discussion. God is showing us the original church model from the early church. Now, you know what the early church did? They had handwritten letters. They, they, these letters, Paul would write, John would write. All they, all they were having house church from was handwritten letters that were dispersed to them or it was word of mouth. I actually heard Jesus teach this when he was alive. And then in their house churches, they would share that with other people. Now, what's so awesome for us, because this show's wrapping up in the end days, we use YouTube and Facebook to do the same thing. That's all we're doing. You know, we'll sit here tonight, but within the next six days after we put this on Sunday night, 1,500 locations are gonna watch this service. Amen. 503 of them are house churches. Now, guess what Pastor Alex and Lori are getting ready to do? The same thing. He looked at me and goes, Randy, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. He goes, we can just model what you've been doing already. Amen. And that's going to go into churches all over Northern California. Because now the people, they were pastors in brick and mortars for 40 years. And they're saying, have you lost your mind? What are you doing? Well, guess what? Now all these leaders are wanting to be trained by them. So what are we going to do? Train them. You see the multiplication? Awesome. We sow what we know from last day's harvest ministries into others. And God multiply it. And I put this in my notes. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, Satan. <laughs> I mean, guys, we went, I went out, it, we drove past their house. I mean, North Pole Valley Road, it is pitch black, man. I mean, and, and it was so awesome because here's God, us out in the middle of the boondockers, in the middle of the night, spending four and a half hours in a home that is going to create a celebration service that shoots a video, then is going to open house churches the other six days a week, they've already got people knocking their door down. And you know, I've been in ministry for a long time, and you can always tell when you sit down and it's a struggle. If, if you're trying to get somebody to understand something and there was no struggle, that four and a half hours went by like that. And Pastor Alex goes, you know, Randy, I feel like I wasted 40 years. I said, no, no, you, you know, but he goes, I know nothing. He goes, ever since I read the red book, he goes, I said, you still got time. You still got time. You still got time to finish well. He goes, I feel like I just got born again. He goes, that's how excited I am about Jesus. Now, when you're talking to people in their 60s that are saying, I feel like I just got born again, I think there's some hope for the church. Amen. Amen. Because they've seen it all. They've heard it all. But this rocked their planet. So we've been spending several weeks on valuing the devalued. And uh, the title of my message tonight is Quick. Quick. So the definition of quick is promptness, Rapidly and action. You really in the end times better be quick to be obedient 
to what the Lord is telling you to do. You better be quick to spend time to know his voice. Because a lot of voices are going to come in your head, even as a believer. Even as somebody that loves Jesus, there's going to be a lot of input. But you're going to have to say, this is what the Lord's telling me to do quickly. So we're going to take a look at this quick stuff in the Bible. So remember, quick is promptness, rapidly, and action. So let's look at Luke 14. We're going to go a little bit further back from where we're going to be, but we're going to be in Luke 14, 16 through 24. Because God is moving quickly. They have cell phones now that you push a button, it goes out in a 150 foot perimeter, the Jesus film, it contacts any cell phone in that perimeter, and it's in over 1900 languages. This ministry is having people saved every single second. And not one brick and mortar. All this is happening in the homes. That's not a criticism. Let me tell you something. I got pastors, elders watching this. We have no problem with your brick and mortar on Sunday. But it better be boasting about what your body, what the body has been doing the rest of the week. So Luke 14, 16 through 24. Now you need to realize as I read this story to you, this right here is God the Father and he's preparing a banquet. Now Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. This is a parable. Jesus is teaching a story but this represents that the Father is preparing heaven for us. Right. At the time of the banquet, he sent his service. Servant, who's the servant? Jesus. Who's the servant now? Us. Amen. Jesus is in heaven, but now Pete, Judy, it's us. We're the servants that are bringing the message to the people that know God, hey, guess what? We're, this thing's wrapping up and God needs you to open a house church. God needs you to be ministering. You can't be potted. You've got to be planted. Amen. You can't just sit in a pot and you won't produce any fruit. Mm -hmm. You've got to be a teacher by now. Amen. So I know I'm paraphrasing this all up, but let me explain it to you. <laughs> Verse 17, at the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come for everything is now ready. Right now you can get on the Internet and it is just screaming. And this is going to blow some doors off. I might even get some emails. I was getting ready for work about five o'clock. And the Lord spoke to me and he goes, Randy, the rapture is not to bring judgment on the earth and start the tribulation. The rapture will start judgment on the church. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's quiet in here. <laughs> and I, I've never heard this taught. And this is fresh off the grill. So I'll probably mess it up, but I'll clean it up with some syrup. But I sat there and I walked out in the kitchen. I said, Missy, God just told me that the rapture is to start the judgment on the church. <laughs> and she goes, you're right, Randy. Don't I have an awesome wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just going to give you the Reader's Digest version because I got to get through what I'm going here. But Jesus said, judgment begins in the house of God. Jesus said, the Laodicean church, I'm going to vomit out of me. We've acquired wealth. We don't need you, Jesus. You suck. Mm. That's ghetto Bible. <laughs> so what's going to happen when the body of Christ is removed mm -hmm. and what's left behind what we call church yeah. is just going to implode. Yeah. It's, it's not going to have a structure 
I'm saying if it's at the beginning of the tribulation, but the Lord just showed me as he removes the Holy Spirit from the earth, removes the body of Christ, that Laodicean church structure that said, please excuse me, I just bought some quads, man. That's why I'm going to back this up. People think, oh man, I'm just going to stay here and God's going to use me. No, 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 no. That, that's, that's over. The Bible says they'll be gnawing their tongues off in their mouths. And as they're chewing their tongue off, cursing God. Now, the first three and a half years, you've got the Antichrist. It says the whole world is going to chase this dude. Now, guess what else he has with him? The false prophet. So that means the religions of the world that are left are going to follow him, too. There will be two prophets prophesying for three and a half years in Jerusalem. CNN will be there. Even Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, they're all going to be there. Because yeah. guess what? The guys we're dealing with right now, they're going to be a memory compared to what's coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These guys will call down fire from heaven on anybody that comes close to them. 144,000 virgin, virgins are going to be preaching in Jerusalem. Look it up. 144,000, never been with women, all kinds of evangel. But man, that just blew my mind. So, Randy, you're crazy, but you know what? I caught it. Because once the body of Christ is removed, once the church is removed, I don't care what those guys, if they're standing in the pulpits going, well, the aliens took Randy finally. (laughs) We finally got the ancient alien show to get that guy out of here. (laughs) But just think about it. When the rapture happens, the catching away, you are going to have complete chaos. And the Antichrist, the Bible says, will stand up you know, say, hey, peace. <coughs> and then the false prophet will come up and you know it's going to happen because the Jews, when he walks into that rebuilt temple, he's going to walk out and go, oh, by the way, I'm God. Yeah. Bad day. We drink the blue Kool-Aid, man. We drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> And then he's going to go, oh, by the way, if you don't take a mark so I can identify you, you won't be able to buy or sell. Mm -hmm. And if you don't worship me, you'll be beheaded. So get on fire now. Amen. Start winning people now. Start being pumped up about house church now. Well, Randy, I'm going to, people call me, I'm going to barricade my house. I said, dude, somebody's going to take a deer hunting rifle and not kill you at 300 yards. You're going to poke your little head out of your house and you think you out barricaded and you're going to be like a ground squirrel in a hay field. (laughs) I did grow up on a farm. I don't know how I got off on this, but I like it. All right. So just pray about that. I might have to do some messages on this. I might have to write a book about it because God, God blew my, He goes, yeah, I ran when the rapture happens. That's to start the judgment on the church. And then all of a sudden I realized, man, if the Holy Spirit's gone, the body of Christ is gone, and that Laodicean is left, judgment will start there. You'll just see organized religion just destroy itself then the antichrist will step in with the false prophet who's some form of religious leader Mm -hmm. and they'll say the aliens took lauren and jennifer with randy (laughs) (laughs) you know they flew out of here so all right all right I'm, i'm being funny but serious at that time of the banquet He sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, 
Come for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuse. The first said, I have just bought a field and I must go and see it. Well, if you bought a field, I hope you already saw it before you bought it. But please excuse me. Verse 19, another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen and I am on my way to try them out. You think you would try them out before you buy them? Please excuse me. There, there's, there's a rhythm here of some kind. Verse 20, still another said, I just got married. I can't come. So the servant came back and reported to his master. Then the owner of the what? House. Became angry and ordered his servant go out quickly. Here's that word again. Quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and the country lanes and compel them to come in. So my house... We're out in the boondockers on Pole Valley Road, and it is pitch black, man. You're trying to find the little numbers on these little mailboxes, and they don't exist. I told Pastor, we need some big numbers on this fence, man. Well, we saw you drive by. I said, that's the problem. <laughs> I love you, Alex, and Lord, you know that. Now listen to this. So that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will taste of my banquet. Ooh, ouch. Yeah. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. But Lord, I prophesied in your name. I drove out demons in your name. I did miracles. See, this is the church that's going to get left behind. Well, well, why are you calling me a worker of iniquity? The word iniquity means divided. When I rang the bell, you were not available. When I needed you to do something for me, the temporal took over the eternal. Something that you focused on that is just a vapor disqualified what I needed to do for eternity. This isn't to scare people. This isn't to beat people up. This is reality. We've got to be so careful because the Laodicean church that's being vomited out, we've acquired wealth. We don't need to be dependent on you, Jesus. We've got our oxen. I just bagged the babe, man. I got married, dude. Buzz off. I just bought the property of my dreams. I just built the house of my dreams. And you missed it. You missed it. Now, we can have all those things. But Missy and I can still live at Top Ramen, man. We can go back to Top Ramen. We can go back there if God needs that. Because everything we have is His. The Master was not a priority in the homes of the people He knew. One more time for the hearing impaired. The master was not a priority in the homes of the people he knew personally. God is going to prompt you to go out quickly into the streets, into the roads, into the highways and byways, out on Pole Valley Road in the middle of the night for four hours. And guess what? 
people are going to start coming to that house. A video is going to start being shot at that home. Then it's going to be used in other homes and it's going to multiply. Satan was pulling his horns off going, don't let Randy find that address. <laughs> it was funny because the couple, they go, now Randy, if the weather's bad, I said, man, I grew up here. I don't care if there's two feet of snow and a blizzard. We're locking in the hubs. It wouldn't have mattered if it was white out. I would have just drove slow. Nothing would have kept me from being at that divine appointment. Right. Because I'm like a pit bull on a T-bone. <laughs> if you know what that looks like. Or if your awesome imagination could imagine that. So let's look at Luke 15, 22. We're going to catch up what we got to last week. So I'm just going to read a portion of this. I'm going to break this one verse. We are going to dissect one verse tonight. So Luke 15, 22, we're talking about the prodigal. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. There are people that are going to come back to Christ, come back to the Father's house, and it is going to move quickly on them. These people within a week are going to open house churches. These people within a week are going to start reaching people. And you better have your tinnies on because if you're slow, they're going to go catch up. So we want to take a look at this, bring the best robe and put him on him. So let's go to Colossians. We're only doing one verse tonight, but we're adding some verses to the one verse. So it's a good salad. It's a good balanced meal here with a little protein on it. So Colossians 3, 12 through 15. Colossians 3, 12 through 15. We're talking about being clothed. Colossians 3, 12 through 15. I'll give you a second. This is some good stuff right here. So many times we'll read one little verse like that and it has so much nuggets in it that we, we blow past it. So we're not going to do that. So we're in Colossians Paul is writing to the Colossians. And all these people that are reading this are in house churches. Uh -huh. All of them. Right. Colossians 3, 12 through 15. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion. Clothe yourselves with kindness. Clothe yourself with humility. Clothe yourself with gentleness. And I know none of the people in this room have this problem, but clothe yourself with patience. <laughs> See, there's something about those things. You have to make sure you have them on. Because if you can put them on, that means you can take them off. He says you're supposed to be clothed with these things. Bear with each other and forgive each other if anyone has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Verse 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you are called to peace, and then be thankful for it. Wow. So when all of a sudden we're looking at verse 22, let's go back to Luke 15, 22. Luke 15, 
So Luke 15, 22. I'm letting you guys get that. Mm -hmm. But the father said to his servant, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. The prodigals who are returning to the father's house to be sent out quickly as servants to gather the harvest will be covered and anointed with humility. This is going to be one of the most powerful harvest of prodigals because they will be humble, but they will be anointed. Let me give you some scripture for free because you look hungry. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Powerful grace when you're humble. So verse 22 says, put a ring on his finger. So now he's been clothed with all this humility, with all this compassion, with all this kindness. Put a ring on his finger. You know what the ring represented? It reestablished his authority immediately. As soon, I mean, this guy had wasted his inheritance, wasted his life. And the father said, you know what? I love you unconditionally. Here's the robe. Here's the ring. Reestablished his authority and his inheritance. Let's see what else he got here in verse 22. And sandals on his feet. Verse 22 said, put sandals on his feet. The prodigal returned home without shoes. The prodigal returned home without shoes. A sign of having become extremely destitute. So when he showed up at the father's without any shoes on, it showed that he had become extremely destitute. Well, why would it mean that, Randy? I walk around with no shoes on all the time. Yeah, we're not destitute. I mean, this had a major... If you saw somebody walking without shoes on, they were extremely destitute. Because in ancient biblical times... Only servants and slaves were barefoot. Only servants and slaves were barefoot. Put sandals on him. Clothe him. Put a ring on him. Put new sandals on him. Remember, this series of messages is valuing the devalued. Why are sandals so important? I'm glad you asked. Let's go to Ephesians 6.15. Ephesians 6.15. So we were just in Colossians. So just back up a little bit from Colossians and you'll find Philippians You'll find Ephesians. So Ephesians 6.15. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Without the gospel and without you having peace, you're going to be barefoot. And you're going to be vulnerable. Well, why did Paul mention the sandals? Because he's sitting there looking at Roman soldiers all the time. Many Roman soldiers had sandals with small spikes on the bottom of them. The King James says your feet shod, which we would know that term as a horse having a shoe put on it, with your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. See, if you don't have a grip with your sandals, you won't be a peaceful person 
and you won't be preaching the gospel or the good news because your whole life, every time the enemy attacks you through a person, through a situation, you just get knocked down because your feet aren't gripping the ground. You've become a slave to the temporal and you're barefoot. Many Roman soldiers had sandals with small spikes on the bottom of them so they could get a grip in combat. So they could get a grip in combat. After the father in his house places the new sandal on the prodigals, they will be ready to fight the good fight of faith. <clears throat> when the prodigals come back, they're clothed, their authority is reestablished, their feet are fitted with sandals, they will be ready to fight the good fight of faith. And I have read the back of the book and it says we win. We win. Remember what I told him? We win. And that's awesome. So. That was one verse. And you have all these other verses attached to it. So remember. The prodigals as they start coming in are going to be devalued and they're going to be slaves to sin. But as they come back, if they're ready, we're going to help get them clothed again. We're going to help let them know their authority and their feet fitted with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You really need to pray for yourself to be humble. You really need to pray for yourself to be peaceful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, the word meek does not mean weak. The word meek means controlled strength. Mm -hmm. So as a believer in these end times, the only way you're going to walk in God's authority is for him to clothe you to put that ring on your finger, those sandals on your feet, but then he's going to say, I need you to go out quickly. Because the people I counted on, the people I know, the people that say they know me are saying, please excuse me, I'm too busy to be inconvenienced. Randy, are you getting angry? No, I'm getting very excited. <laughs> because these messages help me when I see people that are way more gifted than me, way more talented than me, way more time than me, wasting it. Yeah. Yeah. Wasting time. And then God comes to them and says, can I get you to go to heaven with me? Can I get you to go celebrate eternity with me? And we say, you know what, God, this temporary thing has way more importance to me than running around with what you want me to do. I'm busy. Yeah. So why is the rapture going to happen? I was listening to a well-known prophet the other day and he said he felt at least 50% of the Christians in church won't leave. And this, this guy is, I'm not going to say his name, but he used the illustration of the five virgins. There were 10 virgins. They were all waiting for the bridegroom to come. But guess what? We got time time. We sleepy. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, boom! Here it comes. We got to go. 
And all of a sudden, the five virgins that didn't have extra oil, hey, hey, Randy, can you give me some of your anointing? So sorry, gotta go. Well, that's arrogant. No, no. I have some extra anointing. So five of the wise virgins trimmed their lamps and lit it up and made it to the banquet, made it to the bridegroom. But the five that were foolish, 50% of the church, hey, 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 can I get some of yours? And this is what the five wise virgins said, go back to the peddlers of the anointing for your oil. See, some of us, it's going to be too late. And you're going to have to go back to the peddlers for some oil. And then the Bible says the door was closed. So while you're out dinking around trying to get an anointing off a peddler, the five wise virgins are gone. Then another prophet said, he, he used a scripture, Judy said 66% won't make it. Another parable. I told you guys, you're going to stand before the Lord and he's going to say, depart from you. Can we have Randy back? Can we, can we listen to what mean old nasty Randy was saying? See, God is warning the church. He has no problem with the unsaved. God loves the unsaved. He, he shed his blood for them. The problem he has is with us. The problem he has is with us wasting our lifetime. Wasting it. And then we die and stand before him and we start bawling and squalling and whining and moaning. I went to church on Easter. I went one year on Christmas. Many of you should be teachers by now. But we have to teach you the milk again. Because you don't want solid food. You don't want the meat because the meat means you're supposed to be discipling people. The meat means you're supposed to be winning people. Now, I've got an awesome congregation here because they've always got to remember several hundred people are watching this, but they're within my eye contact range here. And then he's talking to me. Randy's picking on me again. No, I'm not. You just happen to be in the reality of what we're talking about. I'm fired up. Because this stuff used to frustrate me. The whining and moaning and the excuses. And Judy, Pete, I found out, I'm supposed to be the servant. Pick me, Jesus. Pick me. Pick me. I'll go out to the Chilliquin for three years. I'll go to Stockton and get 2,800 young people saved. I'll go to Modesto where they walk in with handguns. Oh, the elders would freak out when the kids would come in at Stockton with nine millimeters and 44 magnums and, and the elders in Stockton, you know, they're just having a conniption fit. I said, hey guys, some of the churches I've been in, maybe even this one, I'd like to carry a gun to. <laughs> See, this is called freestyle. So when you have your own house church, you style it up however you like it. This is not discipleship time here. This is put a fire under your butt and put the spurs to you. Is that in the Bible? Spur one another on. I preached one night with cowboy boots and spurs on. Man, this is awesome. So we're going to do an altar call now. We're going to calm down a little bit. We're going to calm down a little bit. 
Now you pray for me about this rapture thing. Because a lot, oh, oh, what do you mean? Judge the church. Now remember, the third, first three and a half years, the Antichrist, the false prophet, at the middle of the three and a half years, Satan himself is going to possess the Antichrist. So at first, you're going to have Satan the father, Antichrist the son, false prophet, Holy Spirit. This Trinity thing he's trying to fake everybody out with. But you got to get shot in the head, man. It's, it's a good book, man. You should, this thing is awesome. And I wrote two books about the book of Revelation. So. And he's going to get healed. He's going to come back to life on the third day, emulating everything of Jesus. It says the world will be intoxicated with this guy. It says the world will just marvel after him. Right. Now that first three and a half years aren't wrath. But at three and a half years, then you go into the wrath of the Lamb. All mountains will be leveled. You read it. It's in there. It's no bueno. So you don't want to be here when this is going on. You don't want to be here when the guillotines are running and anybody that does confess that they're a Christian their heads are getting chopped off. You don't want to be here when watching families with small children that can't feed them are lining up, taking a mark in their hand or their forehead because their children are starving to death. You don't want to be here for that. If you can't be pumped up, excited, motivated now, you are not going to be that during then. That's right. But remember, when the church is removed, judgment will come on whatever church is left behind first. It'll be exposed. Mm -hmm. And then the Antichrist will fill the void of what we should have been doing. And they'll worship him. Because the church will be removed but the denominationalism will still be here. All those divisions. So be praying for me about that message. So let's pray a prayer with these online. So Romans 10, 9 says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you'll be saved. In the book of Acts, it says, God will be pouring out his spirit on all people, and you'll just call on the name of Jesus and you'll be saved. And by the way, during the tribulation, there will be an angel circling the earth, preaching the gospel in every language, every tongue. That's why the Bible says men will be without excuse. You will not be able to say, I didn't get to hear the gospel after the church was removed. Judy, they won't be able to say that. The gospel will be preached in every language, every tongue to every person on the planet. You'll just be seeing a 747 angel doing it. And you will hope that you're not seeing that. Because if you're seeing the 747 angel preaching the gospel, bad news. Bad news. Isn't the Bible awesome? Oh, we're doing an altar call. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, you're trying to get saved and Randy's flapping his gums. It happens. I get excited. So we're going to pray a prayer with you and just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, believe I believe that you hung on a cross, that you hung on a cross and that you died and, that you died and paid for my sins. Jesus, Jesus I, believe I believe that you rose again, that you rose again on the third day. Jesus, Jesus, I ask you, into my heart, into my heart. As, my Lord, as my Lord and Savior. And Savior. Jesus, Jesus, I love you. I love you. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a clap. Amen. Now, we want you that if you're opening a house church or you already have, put the heart emoji on our Facebook page so we can be praying for you. Use the video. 
Use the altar call, have a discussion. It's that easy. That's why hundreds and hundreds of people have open house churches. Now we got a whole nother new group of people gonna do a celebration service in a house. In a house. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. And I, I don't drink coffee. I just I love it, love it, love it. I, if I took in caffeine, I would be afraid. I'd be afraid of myself. So, that house church is now going to start putting in their service that Pastor Alex is going to be teaching and Pastor Lori into all these other house churches. And you can do the same thing in the Philippines, in Afghanistan. Anywhere on the planet. I know for some of you that's risky, risky. But in London, in New York, if you get strong enough to where you feel God's got a message, start shooting a video, and as you multiply, send that out to your house churches um, as you multiply. You don't have to just use our stuff. You can, we want you to, but there's a lot of good teaching, and there's a lot of good teaching even in your own language on YouTube. So we're not all that in the bag of chips. We don't know it all. Trust me, people will tell you Randy doesn't know it all. I know because they tell me. So <laughs> I'll give you a scripture for that. We prophesy in part. We teach in part. Nobody has it all figured out. Mm -hmm. Nobody. But when perfection comes, yeah. Yeah. then we'll know because we'll made perfect like him. That's right. But you might have to die or get raptured to get there. So let's fly United. Let's fly Dove Airlines. The rapture happens. And if the Lord takes you home early, you better be working in the field. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Love you guys. See you next week.